Early morning in Madagascar. This Indian Ocean spice island is a melting pot of peoples. Malays, Polynesians, Chinese, Arabs and Africans live and have intermingled here. It's the fourth largest island in the world, but also one of the poorest countries. 85% of the population are rural and their traditions are deeply rooted. It looks like a festival, but it's not. The Rakatondra Zaka family have gathered from all over the island to honour their dead. In Europe, cemeteries are quiet places. In Madagascar, people let themselves go. Family members dance, sing and celebrate. They're happy to see their dead again. The family grave is opened and left for one hour to breathe. Poisonous gases must dissipate before the men can climb into the graves. This custom is called famadia and is common in the highlands of Madagascar, when people can afford to pay for it. The Madagascans open their graves at regular intervals. Strangers are usually not allowed. We were lucky. Up to a hundred skeletons, bones and remains of the dead are laid to rest in graves like these. The dead of the Rakatondrazaka family have lain together for the last 30 years. <laughs> Small bottles with names found in clothing identify the dead. Everyone has his or her correct place. The dead are lifted from the graves in mats. Family members vie to carry the remains. The dead are shown to the family anti-clockwise. They believe this helps to confuse the evil spirits, so they can't find their way back to the village. For Madagascans, the dead are not really dead. They are ancestors. They are part of the family. Their souls live on. They are thanked. They have helped the family with the harvest or by blessing them with children. New family members are introduced. The ancestors are informed about everything which has happened since they passed away. Everyone looks at the remains to convince themselves that they belong to their branch of the family. Fourteen dead are taken from the grave and handed over to their relatives. It was probably the Indonesians, who migrated to Madagascar between the 9th and 13th centuries, who brought this tradition to the island. One of them died shortly after landing and was buried. The family moved further up the highlands. Later, they collected the body to place him in a family grave. The soul, they believe, can only find peace when resting in a family grave. The return of the dead is a joyful occasion, even if some of those present are overwhelmed. At the Famidia, the bone-turning ceremony, money is no object. Musicians are always present, cattle are slaughtered, relatives and friends are invited to eat. Often, more than a year's income is spent. The remains of the dead are cleaned, turned and wrapped in a fresh shroud. For Madagascans, the dead are worth more than the living. The new shrouds are made out of silk. It's believed the souls of the dead are in the land of the shadows from where they observe their descendants. Despite the fact that most Madagascans call themselves Christian, they strictly adhere to their pagan traditions. Pieces of old shrouds are often taken by the women. They put the shreds under their pillows to bring luck and the blessing of many children. Madagascans believe that at the moment of death, the spirit and the soul separate from the body. Both become immortal. 
Independence from the family in the world of the dead is not possible. Expulsion from the family, or a refusal to be buried in the family grave, is the worst punishment that a Madagascan can imagine. Worse than death itself. L'esprit toujours vivant, même si le mort ou le défunt devient poussière comme ça, ben, je crois toujours que l'esprit promène, fait de fond de valeur, fait de voir, fait de fait de va et vient dans la maison, dans toutes les circonstances. Et bien, l'esprit aussi a une certaine influence sur les, c'est-à-dire les ceux qui sont encore vivants, c'est ça. After the dead have been shown to all those present. They are placed back in their grave. Famidias were banned during the French colonial period in Madagascar, but the population stuck to their traditions, even if it led to punishment. For 30 years, the Rakadondrazaka family has been unable to hold a bone turning ceremony. They didn't have enough money. Now, they want to have a Famidia every seven years. Many Madagascans consider seven a lucky number. The stone slab closes the grave until the next ancestor ceremony. Madagascans don't believe in reward or punishment in the afterlife. They have no paradise, nor hell. This belief often brings them into conflict with the established church. The rural population saves every penny for an appropriate gravestone. They don't want to annoy the spirits of the ancestors by trying to save money. A new grave, like this one, costs 25 million Madagascan francs, about 4,500 US dollars. For most people here, this is a fortune. Everyone in Rodolf's family has come to help out. The daughters look after the animals. All three are going to school. Every penny is considered carefully before being spent. The economic situation in the country isn't exactly rosy. Nationalization at the end of the 1980s led to a reduction in investment. Everyone tries to survive as best as they can. Rodolf makes bricks which he sells. They're just a few kilometers from the capital of Madagascar, but there's no electricity supply. Water is hauled from the well. The roads are in terrible condition. The World Bank has invested millions to improve the roads, but it's hard to see where the money has gone. Everyone complains the money has disappeared into the pockets of the politicians. Not much is left for the rest of the population. Un famadien, il faut, ça dépend de la possibilité financière du, de la famille. Parce que si quelqu'un a quelques millions en poche, ben c'est facile d'organiser un famadien. Lui, c'est le maf, ça, il fait nos fenêtres, il y a une mère à poule, c'est Madagascans still have a deep feeling of belonging to the family as well as to the village. Rodolf is the village musician. After work, the villagers often come together to sing. We're on our way to one of the most impressive ceremonies held in Madagascar. As well as the Famidia, there is the ancestor festival of Fitampoa, the ceremony of eternal rest. It's particularly important for the Sakalavan clan. It's a religious event and only takes place every five years. Our two-day journey from the east to the west coast is an adventure. We end up stuck in a river. Our film cassettes are soaked, but luckily still usable. We're in Below, a small village in Tsiribihina. The Tsumba is the house where the holy relics of all the Sakalavan kings are kept. 
Every five years it is cleaned, newly painted and decorated with red ribbons. The Sakalavan, who believe in the reincarnation of kings, meet in the house of the current Sakalavan queen. The women, who feel deeply moved by the spirit of the king and often fall into a trance. Their clothing is similar to those of the kings and their servants hundreds of years ago. The queen and all the Sakalavan women wear a traditional hairstyle for the Fitampoa ceremony. <laughs> The Sakalava clan is one of about 20 population groups in Madagascar. Their area reaches almost over the entire length of the west coast, approximately a quarter of the area of the whole country. For the Fitampoa, the birth of the royal relics, a village is created. Huts are built on holy places on the river. The Sakalava live here for eight days. Members of the Sakalava clan come together from all over Madagascar. According to them, about five million people belong to the various Sakalava groups. In Bolo, thousands of believers have gathered together. It is the most important event in the life of a Sakalavan. The door of Tsumba, the holy place, opens. Carriers of the relics appear with the precious remains of the kings. They are stored in cases made from crocodile leather and decorated with metal. Every part has a meaning. The hair of the king symbolizes his wisdom. The fingernails show the direction to his people. A piece of the skull symbolizes intelligence a part of the ear, the readiness of the king to listen to the people. The procession leads from below to the temporary holy village, seven kilometers away. After a week, the remains of the ten kings will be washed there. The queen leads the procession over the last kilometers to the tent of the relics. They will remain there until they are washed in the river. The next day, the people move and take everything with them. At the holy place of the washing, there are special laws which everyone, including foreigners, have to respect. Shoes cannot be worn. At a temperature of 35 degrees in the midday heat, that makes treading on the sand virtually impossible. It's also forbidden to wear any kind of head covering. Eating pig or poultry is also forbidden. So are plastic objects. Le famadia, c'est pour rendre hommage à ses ancêtres, aux ancêtres des communs du mortel, de chaque famille. Alors, la famille Rakout, pour avoir la bénédiction de ses parents, il fait le famadia. La famille Rabé autant. C'est différent du Fitampoa. Le Fitampoa, c'est pour avoir la bénédiction du Dieu créateur. Parce que nous estimons, comme j'avais dit au début, que les rois de fin sont placés après les demi-dieux dans la hiérarchie du monde des morts. But this time, the gods were obviously unhappy with the Fitampoa festival. On the third day, half of the village burnt down. Some said the toilets and the showers which had been installed put a curse on the tradition, and that's why the fire had broken out. During the festival, the Sakalava wear their finest clothes and jewelry. Many lost everything in the fire. The spirit of the kings overcomes some of his people, so they go into a trance and ask for the reason of the fire. Mm -hmm. 
Ja mislim vese, tu sa mislim duši. Because the traditions haven't been adhered to, apologies are performed at the royal graves. The carriers of the relics undertake this task. They are shown a great deal of respect. The honor goes from father to son. For Vasas, strangers and foreigners, visiting the royal graves is generally taboo. The relic carriers first have to ask the spirits of the dead for their permission. <laughs> The Madagascans trust the wisdom of the ancestors. The Sakhalavan requests the spirits of the kings to protect the Fitampoa festival from further disaster. The first slug of local rum is to placate the ancestors. The relic carriers commit themselves to maintain all the traditional laws from now on. It's not only the spirits of the kings that should help. 100 kilometers north of below is the Tsingi National Park. Many lemurs live here, and here the grades of the Vatsimbas can be found. They are supposed to be the oldest residents of Madagascar. The oldest grave site in Madagascar can only be reached by river. It requires special permission to visit. Magloire Kamam, the queen's son, and other family members are trying everything to put the spirits of the ancestors in a good mood. Hence this journey. The graves lie in rocks high above the water. According to traditional law, the fadis, the way must be climbed without shoes. The ancestors are soothed with prayers and rum and promise that the fadis will continue to be observed. Only the wisest of the clan is entitled to lift a prohibition. That didn't happen this time at the Fitampoa festival. So, now they have promised that the toilets and showers in the village will be removed. The Vatsimba gravesite can no longer be visited by foreigners. In the past, they took too many bones as souvenirs. The gods are asked to pardon this. The races are present the five continents. Alors, voilà une occasion propice pour que tout le monde voit, que tout le monde sache que nous avons des merveilles en voilà une. C'est pourquoi nous sommes ici. A few days before the holy washing of the royal relics, special branches are cut. They must be straight and strong enough to hold the relics. In anticipation, many women overcome by the spirit, fall into a state of ecstasy. Today is also the day when the women have free reign. They can choose men they want to sleep with. It doesn't matter whether they are married or not. It's only the men who are punished if they show signs of jealousy. This is the so-called Valabe night. It is one of the high points of the Sakalava festival. Every day, the queen and her followers sit under the sunshade. Traditional music and songs are played in the afternoon. They sing of the feats of the kings. Those who have been possessed by the spirits of the ancestors sit at her side. Through them, the spirit of the dead communicates his wishes. <laughs> The spirits are appeased, huts are built again, the modern installations have disappeared. Whoever wants to go to the toilet now has to go in the bushes, just like their forefathers did. Washing now takes place in the river. 
the days roll on in the same way. Every afternoon, the Takalava get together. The morning belongs to the traders. Many people in the region hope to make a lot of money during the eight-day festival. Below is usually a sleepy village of around 25,000 residents. During the festival, this number increases dramatically. This family is hoping to make some extra money by selling fried fish. They also offer face masks made from dried plants to protect against the sun's rays. This family comes from the steppes of the south. Because of drought, they came to Below. They grow cassava, maize and millet. Madagascans live in large families, from 70 up to 100 people. Everyone cares for each other. For Madagascans, zebu cattle means wealth, also rice. Whoever owns rice is held in high esteem. Top grade rice is exported. Poorer quality rice is imported from Pakistan and India. The rural population sells everything they grow. The staple diet is rice, three times a day. And when there's money, they have it with meat or fish. In many parts of the country, the people are suffering from malnutrition. Medical care leaves a lot to be desired. There are not enough schools. Over 60% of the population are illiterate. Madagascar limps behind other developing countries. Poverty and backwardness don't spoil the mood of the festival. Finally, the long-awaited day arrives, the washing of the royal relics. The carriers take the relics from the tent. Those possessed by the spirit of the forefathers are consecrated with rum. As happened every day during the celebrations, a zebu cow is slaughtered. The meat is taken care of by the royal family. Apologies were made to the spirits of the animal earlier. It's believed the blood on the sword brings luck to the Sakhalavan youngsters. Traditional drumming with always the same beat gets the crowd into the mood. The relics are carried past the Queen. This festival has been in existence for over 600 years. It was only banned during the French colonial era. Afterwards, the festival was celebrated every 10 years. But since 1988, it takes place every five years, so the beliefs and traditions are not lost to the young. The relic carriers and the members of the royal family go into the river. For the last 24 hours, no one has been allowed to wash in the river. Any disturbance of the water was forbidden. Even boats couldn't go on the river. The water has to be pure. The relics are washed. Now, it's another five years until the next Fitampoa, the highest religious celebration of the Sakalava. After eight days of the Ancestor Festival, it's time to go back to the capital of Madagascar. Near the coastal city of Morandeva, we discovered old, erotic grave sculptures. A large part of the sculptures have disappeared. The locals accuse tourists of stealing them. The wooden sculptures show the fertility of women and the virility of men. In Madagascar, a large family means wealth. Today, new graves are built from cement. There are no sculptures. The tradition has come to an end, 
out of pure greed. C'est pour cela que les tombeaux sont maintenant profanés et aussi euh, les gens d'ici, ils n'aiment plus que les étrangers viennent prendre la photo de leur euh, tombeau. Il y en a quelque chose là où ils sont. But in the village, people try to sell us old grave carvings. Lack of money makes people try to sell the sculptures. Madagascans live frugally and simply. But for the dead and their gravestones, nothing is spared. In the highlands of Madagascar, many houses are decorated with flags in the months between July and September to show that they are celebrating their ancestors. This is the Rama Monhiosa. Two pigs have been slaughtered, 100 kilos of rice cooked. Eating takes place in shifts, and even the neighbors are there. Everyone gets a plate of rice with meat before the dead are carried through the streets. The sister, the oldest member of the family, who died far away, is now carried home for the farewell. During the celebrations, the living have the opportunity to tell their ancestors about their troubles and their needs. The ancestors have more power in the hereafter than they ever had in their real life. Hundreds of people do this. Their belief in the power of the ancestors is deeply rooted. The dead are generally put in the family grave a year after their death. Until then, they are placed next to the grave until the family has enough money to open the gravestone. That happens on a precise date. This old man is a Panandru. He's highly respected in the village. He is the one who selects the most favorable day for ancestor festivals and weddings. The Madagascans believe in the spirits of people, animals, and the dead. The instructions of the spirits of the ancestors are strictly followed, even when outsiders consider them absurd. For the Madagascans, it is a rule of life, and they've been following them since childhood. It's a sad event when a relative dies far from home and cannot be brought back. When this happens, the family erects memorial stones to remind them eternally of their ancestors. The material life of a Madagascan has now come to an end. A new life, in another form, can now begin. <laughs>